Hello and welcome to the 3D Code Experience. My name is John Pennington. We're continuing our tutorial with the Cubify fans. Today we're going to go back into using uh, the blob tool that we introduced last time we were talking. Um, we're going to do a couple more things using um, the, the drawing tools with the blob tool. I think you're going to find today's uh, tutorial very interesting. Right, let's start this over. New voxel sculpting. Blank, blank palette, this, uh, this grid over here on the uh, left. Okay, give it a second and it'll come through. And then there we are. Okay, now let's uh, get all on the same page. Go to Windows and reset all pages to default. Now we're looking the same. Okay, we're going to use the blob tool, but before we do that, I like to be in my front view to start. So we're going to go to 2. And I want to be an orthographic, and I've explained that a couple times, but it has to do with precision cutting. If you're not getting the cuts you want, good chance that uh, you're not in orthographic. Alrighty, so let's go right down to the blob tool. It's the tool we used the last time. It's one of the few tools that allows us to do things on the screen. Um, last time we worked with this, we did some tracing around and created the... Uh, um, the seahorse and you see there I just quickly did a drawing using my uh, uh, my mouse and uh, clicked it and uh, that's interesting enough is as you see right there that's what that looks like let me just control Z out of that go back to my front view and let's I want you to see some differences real quick okay so escape out of that there's my basic shape what you saw the last time was a round border. I'm going to hit enter, and there's my round border. Now, the nice thing is, is once you have a shape drawn or loaded in, you can hold your space bar down and move the shape and actually reuse it. Press enter again. Let's go over here, and now we're going to do a plane. So hit enter, and then let's hold space and move it and put it down here, and let's use a sharp border. What I want you to see is just the differences between the three. Okay, I hit escape to take my my uh, my uh, pattern off the screen. All right, so here we have this first one here is the round. This one over here is uh, plain, and this one is sharp. Okay, and if you look on them from the side there, you can see the edges. This looks like a a a, a button. Um, this looks kind of like a pill, and this one over here. Uh, almost has a knife type edge okay and you've got some uh, parameters that you can work with to use those but these are great for drawing shapes and things like that now, some of us aren't as good at drawing as as others are okay let's go with new layer delete the last layer go back to number two that's the quickest way to get to an empty screen when you only have one or two things so let's load in a shape Okay, well, these are just basic things that I've drawn in before, but let's go back to the one where we had our, our seahorse, okay? So let's bring in the seahorse, open it up, and alrighty. Now, the last time I brought this in, I brought it in as a uh, reference image for the background. This time I'm bringing it in as a shape. This actually does all the drawing for me. Last time you saw me do this, I hand drew, but traced my, my shape. And I can do it over here where it says import the curve as filled thick shape in space, okay? Or I could just uh, import the, the, the curve itself, okay? Um, flip my X or flip my Y so he's right up and down, and then just say okay, and there it is, it's a drawing, okay? and and just use this to resize it and then uh I, i've got now well, let's hit my space bar and move it over here and let's start again with our round border and whoops that was the space bar i hit let's hit the enter key and there it is with a round and let's go over here and do it with the plane whoops it's a habit of mine hit the enter key I do it all the time when I'm working, but even without the recorder on, don't think it's the recorder throwing me off. And let's do one with a sharp border. Enter button. There we go. Alrighty, now look at that. We've got three of those. You see my shape is still there. If I hit escape, it'll disappear, but it's still there. 
And then, so I've got three of those, depending on what I want to do with. Now this first one is almost exactly like what we drew the last time. I could have done this with you um, in our last tutorial, but I wanted you to learn to use a reference image for the sake of tracing, because you won't always have a clip art, and sometimes you're going to have to do some things. But today, we're going to work with some clip arts, and we're going to build a model, okay? So let's new out of this. Let's not save. Back into voxel, back into blank. And what we're going to do is we're going to build a model strictly from blob. We're going to use a couple other tools, but mostly blob, okay? Let's escape out of that because we don't want um, the seahorse. Let's go to screen of uh, view number two, okay? And just checking, I'm still in orthographic, okay? And we're going to load in a shape. And the shape I'm going to load in is going to be the body of an airplane or the fuselage. So I actually need to be in a side view. But you know what? I'm going to leave it where it's at. I'm going to leave it in my front view. And I'm going to load it in because I want you to see something later on. So this is my tutorial 6 package. I've got a few things in here I don't need. But um, this is my plane's body. There it is. Um, so I'm going to import the curve, all right, and I'm going to shrink it down a little bit. And you see it's not a super, super smooth, but it's still looking good, okay. I'm going to hit enter, and I'm on my round border, okay. I don't like that because it's not wide enough, okay. So I'm going to control Z that, I'm going to go back to my front, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the radius. I'm going to change the radius to, let's say, 45, and then hit Enter. And you see I don't have a flat edge now, but let's see if it's about what I want. Yeah, that's pretty good for, uh, for an, uh, a passenger plane. All right, so there's my, my thing. Let's escape to get the, uh, the trace off. And that, that came in because I had a clip art in that shape. Now, I drew those clip arts. Um, because there's not too many uh, parts of objects out there. But if you've got drawing programs like Inkscape or um, Photoshop, any of these programs you can use to draw your stuff. Now the main thing is is that you want your... Um, let, me, let me just go here so you can look at this for one second. When you go to load in a shape, you want it to be a white object on a black background. And whatever the white object is, is what will get traced. Okay? So, now Looking at this, um, it's a little bit rough, so I want to smooth it out. But see how many triangles are in this one? So the first thing I'm going to do to get this smoother is I'm going to resample it down to about half. And I'm going to tell it to do it smooth because I'm wanting the smooth uh, thing. That really didn't do too much, but I'm down to 130,000 triangles now. And you'll find that it's easier to do smoothing um, when you've got um, less triangles. And the other thing I'm going to do before I start smoothing this is I'm going to put some symmetry on this. But let's go to the transform tool first, space, number four in my shortcuts, or down here in the bottom where it says transform, which is right there under adjust. There we go. All righty. Now, my tool options are up here, and I like to dock these. We, you know that. You've been watching my videos, so I'm going to put that over there. Okay. And just bring it out a little bit more, okay? And the position of my plane is not in the center. I want this this plane to be in the center. So I'm going to X this, which zeroes out everything. So now that plane is in the exact center. That was the whole reason I went to the transform tool, okay? Now I'm going to go to smooth again, like I originally was going to do. And I'm going to add symmetry. And I want to... Uh, let's see which uh, now because I'm on uh, a front view X would take me the wrong direction so I'm going to uh, run it on the Z plane you see how the Z goes this way so I want to be crossed on my Z alright now let's go back to our smooth tool and let's bring it resize it right click and drag uh, left or right Put a little bit more of uh, height to it. Um, my smoothing is at 25. Let's see if that's good. 
and that's not too bad you see it's taken out most of the deformation in there now if that was a smoother drawing it probably wouldn't need all of this but that's all right it's not hard to come in here and do this kind of stuff and I think I'll leave it right where it's at so there is my fuselage or the body of the plane so let's call it over here double click on the layer body okay now let's go get us some wings okay so we're on two let's go to seven and let's go back to blob and once it comes up we're going to load in the uh, the shapes for the blobs I mean for the wings and this is my wing shape so I'm going to open this okay I'm going to say OK. I'm going to create a new layer because I want this to be able to be moved around on its own. And that's, whoops, let's go back to 7. The reason I'm in 7 is I'm top viewing on my uh, airplane here. And let's resize this just a little bit. I think it's a little bit large for this particular drawing. That looks about OK. We're not following a reference image, so we don't really have a scale to follow. But that's OK because we can... Uh, we can use this any way we want from here. All right. Now, let's get the symmetry up here where we like it docked next to our tool options. All right. Now, we're in the blob. We've got the round border selected, which will make it look round. We could put a, a sharp border in here. A plain border would not look right on here. Either the sharp or the round. I'm going to stay in round for now. Um, I got a feeling if I go with this radius, it's going to be too high. Let's just hit enter and see what it looks like from the side. Okay, now, yeah, see how those are fat. Control Z. Control Z. Hit 7. And then let's go up here and change the radius to, mm, let's say, 20. And we want to turn symmetry off on this layer okay so let's hit enter and let's look at that from the side I think I want to be just a little bit thinner so control Z number seven for the top I'm gonna to make this let's go with 10 all right and let's take a peek at that I'm liking that all right so that's my uh, that's my one of my wings and I'm going to have to uh, move it around and uh, mirror it. Let's go to our transform tool. Alrighty, let's get this where we think it should be. Now, and I could, uh, I could change the shape of this a little bit if I want. You see, even though it's it's drawn in a certain way, I've got some power to uh, manipulate it some. Okay, and let's go up here to symmetry, and let's enable it. You see where the line's going to be, which means my wing will be on the opposite side. Go down here and hit the symmetrical co copy, and immediately it'll create my wing on the opposite side. Now, before we accept all that, I might have want a little bit of a tilt on that. So let's control Z that. Let's take the symmetry off. And let's see, seven is the top, two is the front. Let's, um, let's put a little bit of a, a curve into this. And then let's bring this down. Um, probably, yeah going to need to move this up a little bit and back some let's look at that from the side that's not too bad see now we can when we're looking dead on we're seeing some of the wing in a different direction so let's enable the symmetry and do the symmetrical copy and in a minute we should have our wing there we are so let's call this our wings this is actually moving very quickly is one of the things I like about using this kind of stuff alrighty so now we're gonna need to create the 
the tail wings. Now I created the copy. We can actually name this as we come up because we know what it's going to be. The tail wings. And okay that. We we'll go up here to symmetry and take the symmetry off because there's no sense in bringing that in right now. Let's go to seven. Go back to blob. And let's uh, load in the shape for the tail wings, which I have here, back wings. Okay. And obviously that's going to need a lot of resizing. <laughs> that doesn't look too bad. Let's see what that'll look like if we, you know, let's uh, scale that down some. Yeah, that's too big. So let's take it down. I think I'm liking that. Yeah, right about there. And I'm going to hit enter and see what that's going to look like with the uh, same reference as before. Okay. Let's go to the side. I like the width of it. Bring up our transform tool. And now you can say to center mass so it goes right on the actual part you're working on if that helps you. Um, but it's not absolutely necessary. Just know that, okay? And I could take this back further. I can maybe bring it in a little bit. Let's go here to the side view again. Give a little bit of a tilt. I think we're gonna be all right with that. Let's uh, put our symmetry on. And then um, hit the copy. And there it is. Um, I'm liking that. Okay. Let's go to two. Let's add another layer. And let's make this the tail fin. I'm not sure if that's the correct name, but I think that's what that part is kind of called. And we're going to put the part on the top. Let's go back to our blob tool. And then uh, we want to turn off symmetry. Let's load in the shape. I'm going to use the exact same shape that I did before. I'm still importing the curve. Um, and, and just so you know, I could import this curve as a filled shape. And that will actually, f normally, will fill in that shape. Okay, there it goes. Um, and so it, it filled that in. Now that's pretty thin looking because of the settings that were on there. I'm going to control Z that. I'm um, going to go back to the side view there. Back to my blob. And I'm going to go to load shape. Back wing. Open. I move this to the side so I can see what's going on. I don't want to flip the Y on this particular one. Okay, so I want to import this as a curve now, not filled. Okay, and let's go ahead and flip the Y. And let's get this resize down quite a bit. Alrighty. And move it over here. You could actually do some of the adjusting of size after you create it. So you don't have to be too precise right here. Let's uh, make sure we're on tail fin. Hit the enter. And let's get rid of our shape thing. Let's kind of rotate it around. It's not perfectly zeroed where we want it to be. Okay. So let's go with the top view. Let's go to our transform tool. And we're going to move this up now. But we want it to be on a perfect zero. So as I'm moving this, see over here where this number is? It's, it's adjusting. That shows you which one is, is changing. Now I could probably... Just hit space here and zero it. But I wanted you to know that you can go up here and do things. Okay, that zero didn't do what I wanted it to do. So obviously that's not perfect. But this is zero up here. It takes me right to my center. Boom. And uh, so there we are. That's our, that's our little jet. Okay, we're going to play with it just a little bit more before we finish this tutorial. Um, just some basic things. We're going to smooth it up some. Okay. So let's go to smooth. 
And before I do any real smoothing, I'm going to actually now join all of these parts on the same level because I don't want nothing to move and I want I want to fix something. Because if you notice when I press 2, which is my front view, I'm seeing the side of the of the uh, airplane. But if I go up here to body and uh, and I go to the top and I bring up my transform tool and I touched on this a little bit in the last um, video but it didn't really go into Y. Now if I try to turn that none of the parts go with it. Control Z get back to where I was. So what is it's important now that I I begin to build everything attached to the body in this particular model. Okay, so I hit the plus sign to increase a lo uh, another layer. That makes the body the parent, and anything underneath it would be considered a child. These way they're they are attached, and I can actually do some modifications to to the whole model just by modifying the parent. So go over here to this thing that looks like a division symbol, drag it up to above that uh, that new layer, and it drops in there and it becomes a child. Same thing with the, uh, the tail wings and the tail fin. Just bring it up in there, and it doesn't matter exactly where you drop it in as long as it's above one of those. This volume 49, which was necessary to get it started, can now be deleted. Um, my wings are not inside there so let's get those in there all right everything's in there and I know that by closing it that all I can see is the body okay so to center mass my transformation tool and from here oops uh, even though you can't see it I had the the wings layer selected now I'm on the body layer and the whole model moves okay so now, one of the things that's important is to know where the front is, and the front is the bottom. When you're looking at 7, the very bottom is the front. So let's take this and rotate this, hit my space, call it 90, and now it's pointing down. So my model is exactly where I want it to be. Okay, now that we're oriented the way we want it to be, Everything's facing front, so that way if I press 2, you got a front view. view. 4 is the side, and uh, 7 is my top. Now that I've got all that set up, I'm going to actually merge everything to uh, one layer. So I'm going to merge with, and I'm just going to merge it all down to the body. And there's a couple different ways you can actually do uh, um, a multiple merge like this. Um, I'm just doing it this way because... When I'm done, I have one thing left, okay? I'm going to go to the side view. What I want to teach you now is uh, this tool down here called Cut and Clone. Cut and Clone works very much like the Cut tool. Uh, the only difference is, is that uh, instead of it cutting and throwing away, it cuts and keeps what we're going to cut, all right? So I'm using the Vertex Lasso because I want to be able to define my shape a little bit. And we're just going to make a little... And the double click apply uh, doesn't apply it, but completes it. That would be um, my windshield. Now, I, now it immediately takes you almost to a transform-like tool, but it's not really in a transform deal. Okay, see how that's cut that separate, but it still saved the piece. I want to Control Z those. All right. Now, if I click apply now, it'll keep that part where it's at on the body. I don't want that. I want to put it on its own layer for the moment. So I'm going to put it on this layer and this layer will be called windshield. I also want to double check anytime I, I'm doing something like this. I want to make sure my symmetry is correct. I don't want symmetry on here, especially in the Z axis. Since I've turned things around, if I was going to have symmetry on here, it would be in the X axis now. Let's apply this. and. Yes, we're going to keep the same, okay? Just for the moment, I'm going to click on Move so that you can see the, the look there. So we have that in there. If I click the eye, it takes it away for a moment. You can see that the windshield is actually a separate piece. Now let's go to 7. We're going to use that tool one more time. We're going to put in some rudders. So let's go to the, to the body again. Go to our Cut and Clone. We've got the Vertex Lasso selected. Our symmetry is, is still enabled, which is fine for now. Um, it has more to do with when we go to place it. Alrighty, so let's click 
and we're just going to define the shape that we want this rudder to be and there's our rudder now we got two of them so um, what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to add a new layer this will be our rudders alrighty I actually do not want symmetry enabled on this one it looks like it might be there anyway so let's apply that and then let's just go up here again to move yeah so it's on there but I don't want it for now so I'm going to alt click I I've got my symmetry off I'm going to cut off this one over here whoops was not um, in position for that there we go I cut that one off now the reason that I did that I'm gonna bring the visibility back up is I'm going to turn this one and because when they're linked if you turn them they they tend to turn the wrong way I haven't seen the way yet that I can uh, turn it and have the other one uh, work with this so this is the easiest way so far for me to do this I'm going to go to my transform tool and I'm going to align the gizmo up so that it's actually uh, going with the rudder and so right now I click move only gizmo and then I go down here and I just want to turn this so that it's it's going along that now we click that off get outside of here a little bit so we can see it from a different angle and I'm just going to tilt it some and see that now becomes my 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 rudder in a uh, in a moved position okay so now I want to put this over here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to symmetry and I'm going to on the X because that'll be in the in the middle here I'm going to enable symmetry so it's enabled on the X and I'm going to go down here and hit uh, the duplicate now it actually erased the one I wanted which is odd so we get rid of that okay and also if you're looking my uh, symmetry plane is out here that's because this Z is on alright so now let me just try this one more time okay so it disappeared it that's not what we want control Z bring that back what we're gonna do here to fix this is we go up here to smooth and we're not gonna smooth anything but we're just gonna we're just going to touch on this and then we're gonna go over here and apply symmetrical copy and <laughs> now what happened is look my my symmetrical plane is out from where it should be okay so let's go up here to reset symmetry put it back on the X now it's straight up and down now go down here and boom it's in exactly the right place where I wanted it to be just little things that you have to kind of watch for alright so now we've got a windshield in the front let's do something with this windshield to make it a little more profound okay there's a couple ways I can do what I'm gonna do but I'm gonna use a transform tool and what we're gonna do is we're just gonna scale it down some so that way there's a little more depth to it when you're looking at it see how that goes I could have just pushed it down and uh, pulled it in but I didn't do that I uh, I shrunk it okay so there's that that's pretty much my airplane in a nutshell um, oh, let's throw a jet engine on it and then we'll be all done okay so we want to add another layer all right and on let's see what this layer has symmetry wise it's enabled um, and we want it to reset it and we want it to be on the X okay now let's go to our primitives let's uh, oh. okay so it's already selected we're going to use the create lathe let's bring it down some so we can see what we're doing go to the side view let's rotate it um, let's give it a 90 let's do some stretching to it mm, probably about that big okay now, so what we're going to do is go over here and begin to uh, to do some shaping on this okay
and we're making this hollow by moving some things around in here. Okay, let's get a little closer to this so we can see what's going on. See how the bottom's kind of flared out. Let's get rid of that. Okay, and this should be hollow now. You should be able to look right through it. See that? And that'll be our basic jet engine. Let's uh, maybe give it a little bit of a flare to the front some. And sometimes you need a little more resolution on this particular type of model. So let's, uh, let's apply that one. And then let's pick the cone. And let's bring the cone down. Oops. Back to the four. Bring the, oops. Back to the four. Wait for the uh, tool to activate. negative 90 on that one let's get this back up to about the center probably about there let's see what we got going All right, let's go to four let's go in closer here let's bring this down to about here let's uh, widen this up some alrighty I think that's about where it needs to be yeah so let's click apply on that and then we're going to go to the smooth tool and we're just going to get rid of some of this point up in the front here alright and so that will be our jet engine let's back off a little bit okay let's go to our transform tool We're going to position it where we want it. Okay. Just put it over a little bit far on the wing. Let's go to number seven for the top view. And let's bring that over right about there. I think I'm just going to stretch it and then move it back some so let's see what that looks like yeah not too bad but let's bring it up to where it's touching the wing right about there looking pretty good let's go to our symmetry turn this off let's reset it back to the X and let's see What happens if I duplicate it? Nothing. It disappeared actually. Let's just go back to the smooth tool. Click in the middle. Hit the duplicate. And boom, there it is over on the other side. And that there is our completed jet airplane. Made using mostly shapes. So in today's lesson, you use the blob with an imported shape that you created in a drawing software. Uh, you can actually download clip arts and use those from Google. And you, you use the cutout and clone tool to create your windshield and your rudders. And then we went back to a tool we used before, which was the import lathe tool. And we created our, uh, our jet engines. Well, that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this. and. Uh, I think it would be great to see you take this a step further. This particular model could be painted now, or and you could actually paint windows into it, or you could add some more detailing to it. You could turn it into a warplane. Um, you could put landing gear on it. Um, you could you could um, do so much to this. It just totally up to you as to how you want to modify your own plane. Love to see some results. Um, Good luck with everything, and thanks for watching the 3D Code experience with uh, Cubify fans. Have a great day.